Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, born and raised, uh, 30 years old, lived there my whole life. Uh, small family on the outskirts of a big old steel mining city. It's a good time. Uh, Giuseppe Capilupo. Whole name is Giuseppe Antonio Capilupo. So Joseph Anthony Hedwig. Nice. When I was nine years old, uh, my parents had bought my older brother like a, a cheap drum kit for Christmas one year and enrolled him in lessons and he never really, he like got into it for a little bit, but didn't, didn't really take too much interest to it and as soon as I saw it, I'm like, this, this is insane. So I like put on headphones, picked up his sticks and kind of like taught myself a little bit uh, before eventually getting good enough to start taking lessons from a local guy uh, for like a year, just learning basic rudiments and theory and uh, how to read sheet music and that kind of stuff, but also having the basis in piano as I was classically trained piano for five and a half years, um, kind of gave me a basis for like getting into the theory of drumming. Yeah. It, it's modded so much over the years. I mean, I grew up like studying big band, jazz, swing, Motown, funk, and all the stuff from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, so ranging of any anything from like old drummers to uh, from like. Gene Krupa, Buddy Rich, uh, Elvin Jones, um, Tony Williams, the rest of that stuff on the jazz front. And then uh, there was this band from the 70s called Little Feet. The first vinyl my mom ever let me listen to was this double disc edition of Little Feet's Waiting on Columbus. Which the grooves that their drummer had, his name's Ricky Hayward. Um, I can't remember if they pronounced it Richie or Ricky, it's spelled R I C H I E. But some of the grooves this guy was playing, just like so deep in the pocket, like grooves so dirty you need a shower after you know, like, <laughs> Just super clever writing. Uh, I've always, I, I hate Dave Matthews Band, but I respect them all very much as musicians. And Carter, Carter Burford has always been one of my favorite drummers just because of his like, ability to write very tasteful yet very unique parts to really accentuate the music and that's feel, I feel like as far as a drummer that's like kind of what you're called to do is like write stuff that's going to like be a backbone and blend well with the music and be musical in your playing and not like overplay or underplay but just find that pocket and sit there so it accentuates the music it's like a little seasoning in there definitely awesome I really like writing electronic music while I'm home, whether it's hip hop, like electro, indie rock. Uh, I also tend bar. Uh, in between bands, when I was playing for Haze Today to when Prada picked me up, I got really big into cocktail bartending back in Pittsburgh. Uh, managed a couple bars, uh, trained a bunch of bartenders, ran like a super fancy ice program for a high end cocktail bar in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, studied whiskey for a long time. Uh, the bar I worked at was one of the biggest whiskey bars on the East Coast. We had over 897 different bottles of whiskey, so put a lot of time into studying that while I wasn't putting time into music and drumming, taking a little hiatus from that before uh, Prada picked me up. Absolutely. Yes. A little sweet and savory, that's a definitely a necessary combo. <laughs> uh, being away from my wife and puppies. For sure, uh, it's it's awesome when you have a great support group of friends and stuff on the road. Like I've known the guys in Prada for since we were all teenagers, and everybody was just booking their own tours across the country and stuff. Um, so it's awesome to be able to get this experience and come back out with people that I've known for such a long time, that have known me since we were all kids, uh, essentially. To see them still out here doing it, they're all really nice guys, uh, super down to earth, really humble dudes really easy to get along with and that definitely kind of eases the burden of being away from my wife and uh, my dogs and my kitty at home uh, so it's it's definitely tricky being separate separated from people you love but thanks thankful for technology like google, we use google hangouts a lot to video chats and she has android i have apple uh, so technology definitely helps out so i can see see my loves at home and we talk on the phone every day so we're always in constant contact um, but that's probably the most difficult part is not being able to share these adventures with my wife house divided android and google yeah <laughs> yeah she still has, she still has an imac where she she's a photographer so all right. the editing and stuff that she does with her photography is all on her imac yeah 
so she is also divided within herself. Nice. So she just loves the, uh, I think right now she has the Galaxy S8, and I've had iPhones my whole life. She got me this Apple Watch a couple years ago for my birthday to, like, help me keep my appointments and meetings and stuff, because yeah. I'm a space cadet on a good day. I have such a short attention span, so this <laughs> helps me with important dates and such. Right. Awesome. Uh... I would have to say, uh, to the key of Evergreen, uh, mildly biased because that was one of the songs I got to record on the newest record, Trans Blues. Uh, just because that song has so many different elements, like it goes through like super fast, like aggressive metal uh, parts in the beginning of the song, and then opens up to a really dynamic, kind of fluid, uh, really beautiful musical parts towards the bridge and like a very big, like epic ending. So that song just covers a lot of bases, and it's nice because there's so many different vibes all throughout that song, and whenever they wrote it, it was awesome. It's always awesome to kind of bring that to the table live, because there's a lot of things I do differently live than I do on the record. Uh, just to like spice it up a little bit, and change it up, and obviously challenge myself as a player uh, within reason, that way it doesn't confuse the guys live. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's awesome to change out some of the smaller elements through the songs live, because there's so much breathing room in that song. Uh, to add different percussive elements, uh, different different forms of dynamics, different uh, different grooves in the bridge. Because there's one part in that song specifically that has a really heavy ghost note pattern. That on the record I kept it pretty uh, pretty dialed back and pretty reserved, and just kept it like super in the pocket with a couple small accents. But live, I kind of like, I chop it out a little bit, throw some like crazy ghost notes in there, like kind of spice it up and throw a little groove in that pocket. So it's a toss up between that and uh, Survivor, which was off of the Zombie EP, just because that song is so punishingly heavy. It's got this like really great uh, like snare, like marching snare kind of groove in the beginning and like in the bridge. Yeah. And then obviously the breakdowns and the fills at the end, it's just so heavy. It's just. I think this was from uh, like some sort of an excerpt from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, I might be incorrect, but for some reason, every time I think of this, I don't even know if it's a direct quote or not, or if it's paraphrased, but something that always stuck with me as far as like seeking out adventure. It's dangerous business walking out your front door. You never know where your legs are gonna carry you. And that's, uh, that, that just kind of, that attributes to kind of everything in life, because uh, I'm fortunate to get to travel internationally and nationally a lot uh, with this work and, you know, coming from, you know, my Italian family, getting back to, to see my family and friends over in southern Italy and seeing all the different parts of the world with uh, Devil Wears Prada whenever we get to play it overseas. Um, sometimes a lot of people don't have access to international travel or even traveling within the country because uh, some people are just afraid of something different. Um, but I highly recommend to those that ever get the opportunity to travel to just get out there and do it because it's a the world's a lot smaller than people think it is and every time I go overseas or I, I travel the country I always come back a changed man for the better because being around all these different cultures, all these different people, um, making all these awesome memories, meeting all these like incredible friends that you know are friends you're going to have for the rest of your life. Uh, it's it's so worth it. Like any, Anybody that ever asks what being in a band is like, I always tell them, if you want a lesson in self-discovery, get in a band, or get in, yeah, join a band, get in a van or a bus with a bunch of hot, sweaty dudes and travel around the world or the country for a couple weeks. You'll learn more about yourself and how the world operates in that small couple week time frame than any college education could ever do. Don't take no for an answer. Um, my parents were always very supportive of me. Um, they always wanted me to have a backup plan because obviously the music industry is a very fickle industry and only very few people get the opportunity to live this lifestyle because it's very selective. You know, you have to write the right music that people want to hear. So having that balance of artistic integrity and writing what you believe is gonna be great music to what essentially 
the ma is going to appeal to the masses as well. It's a very fine line to walk. So like a lot of bands will say, you know, we don't want to sell out. Um, finding the balance between your artistic integrity and doing something that will give you longevity as a musician, finding that balance is a tricky thing a musician can do. But you, ultimately you just have to believe in what you're doing. Because nine times out of ten, if you believe in what you're doing, that's going to translate to an audience, and people are going to pay attention to the passion and the hard work that you put into what you do. But don't neglect practice whatsoever. The only way to, to really grow as a musician, even before getting into a band, is make sure you practice. Because I've been playing drums now for 19 years, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of drummers out there that I look up to for inspiration that will always, always, always be better than me. There's always going to be musicians out there and bands out there that are better than you, bigger than you, and work harder than you do. So you can't necessarily want to aspire to be the best of the best, but you can always aspire to be their equal, to count them amongst your peers. Humility in the scene is the, one of the most important aspects you can have because only then when people realize you're willing to share your wealth of knowledge and experiences with like-minded individuals, only that can it be truly become like a music community and a music scene that everybody's talked about for such a long time. The word music scene. Um, you have to you have to cultivate a scene necessarily of equality uh, and kinsmanship and kinswomanship. You know, everybody has to feel welcomed and comfortable in it to build a music community. Because everybody's going to have different ideals, different opinions on what they think is good music, or what you think is good music, or who's a better drummer, who's a better guitarist, who's a better vocalist. Um, it's important to be open to all those opinions and hear it from multiple different angles. Um, but it's important to share this industry with the people around you. It's not just one drummer or one guitarist or one vocalist in a band. It's called a band because it is this grouping of individuals that make this work. It's not any one person that makes up a band. It's not this vocalist, he's the face of the band. You know, like, this ain't NSYNC, this ain't fucking Backstreet Boys. You don't have, like, a Justin Timberlake and a Joey Fatone that are like, these are the dudes everyone's looking out for. Because I see that as a trend happening these days where a lot of these younger kids looking up these bands look to the front man as, like, the face of the band. They happen to forget, it's like, there's most of the times two guitarists, a bassist, a drummer, there are all these units that make up this band as a whole, and that band cultivates that music together to, to, bring, to bring to people's listening pleasures. Uh, it's, it's always important to remember, like, not to put these bands up on a pedestal, because at the end of the day, we're all just normal dudes with a cool, uh, a cool really fun job. That gives us opportunities to do really unique things like you know tour the country playing shows and sometimes play shows outside of the country and it's 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 this crazy all-encompassing thing like this conversation could run itself in circles for hours and hours because there's so many different faucets and different things uh that fans don't think about whenever they think about you know or aspiring musicians for that matter, that they don't think about when they're like, what's it like being in a band? What's it like being on tour? Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, every day it's a challenge because you're, you're challenged with different things. You know, maybe you're sore from uh, the, for the show the night before because you played too hard at the set, or maybe you had an off day and you went to the gym and your muscles are tired from working out, or maybe you didn't get the best night's sleep the night before. But every night you still have to get on stage and put on that same performance regardless if you had the best day ever or if you weren't having the best day ever. Kids are going to expect you to put your all into it. So it's very physically demanding and mentally demanding as well. Being away from your loved ones at home, yeah. being in an in unfamiliar city sometimes, sometimes not knowing people in these cities to like hang out with and go blow off some steam with. Um, it's, it's it can be very mentally fatiguing if you don't know what you sign yourself up for. Because at the end of the day, you're really only working for two hours a day max. The rest of that time, you have a lot of time to kill. So it's like if you aren't morally sound, like so I would say half morally sound and half completely out of your mind, tour life might not be for you. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Awesome. Instagram and Twitter at the Gypsy King, so it's T H E E G Y P S Y K K I N G, uh, the Gypsy King, and uh, on Facebook, I think my Facebook's maxed out right now, but 
uh, every once in a while people get sick of my rantings on there and delete me so every once in a while uh, Giuseppe Antonio Campolupo on Facebook best way to figure out the spelling is just to go to Wikipedia it's a long name awesome uh, Within Prada. Uh, formerly uh, Once Nothing out of Pittsburgh on Solid State Records and uh, Haste the Day uh, on Solid State Records out of Indianapolis. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much, Gypsy King. <laughs> My pleasure, and man. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.